Hey you guys, how's it going? It's been a while since we toured the gardens. Uh, we had a really rough summer here, excessive heat, drought. We lost a couple of beautiful, beautiful plants, which I'll show you in this video. But we're gonna tour all the gardens and you'll see New Jersey in all of its fall splendor. We're just entering peak season now. The foliage looks beautiful. The plants still look beautiful. And I decorated the property with a bunch of pumpkins. There's a lot to see. So let's head out to the gardens and see what's happening today. So one of the stars this year in the late summer and fall garden is this Rudbeckia. It's been blooming for the longest time. I wish I could tell you what variety it is, but I don't know because I didn't plant it. Um, it is really falling over on the walkway. Next year, I'll probably pick it up with some, I don't know, maybe I'll do some, some sort of, you know, some sort of staking. I will figure it out next year. But this is just, it's so pretty, right? Um, those hostas, they're pretty much done. Look at the color on the hardy hibiscus. Sedum Autumn Joy, ah, oh, my favorite. Did a whole video on these guys. I'll, I'll link it here so you can check it out. But the surprise of the year in this garden, now nothing was planted here in the fall when we moved in. It was, everything was clean, it was mowed down. So I did not know that the former, home, the former homeowner had planted a bunch of celosia and amaranth. Well, all the celosia came back in spades because look at it all, look at the seed. And you can see all that seed, right? All different varieties, so pretty. Look at this one. I mean, this might be one of my new favorite annuals. You can cut it. It looks great in bouquets. It looks great in the summer. It looks great in the fall. You know, it looks great in a wreath. And uh, there's so much you could do with it. They're easy to grow too. My snapdragons are coming back again. So I've been cutting them as well. They obviously did not love the summer. They, they are not fans of the heat. But uh, they're doing well again now. Look at them. And then I've got some pansies along here. I love this color, by the way, as an aside. I wish they had more. I would have just bought all this color. Isn't that so pretty? It is from a mixed batch. And I just kind of grouped them together because I love the color. <laughs> At least here anyway. Um, so I've got my yarrow here. That's still, it's still blooming a little bit. I mean, we cut some of the dead stuff off, but it's still coming back. And again, some celosia here, Signora Zinnia, it, it's done. It really needs to go. But really, you can just really get a sense of all the fall color here. Some zinnias, these are all the extras that I planted that I wasn't sure what to do with and I just threw them in here. I thought it would be really great to pop them in along the porch. Fortunately, a bunny enjoyed them a little too much and ate them on me, <laughs> but I did have sunflowers in here as well. And uh, I already took you guys on the porch tour, but I did add some mums recently to the front porch and uh, it's looking good. We added some corn stalks and I love this view. I sit out here with coffee in the morning and sometimes with a glass of wine at night, depending on the day and just take it all in. And on a side note, even though a lot of this stuff is starting to die back and the season's almost over, I love how the zinnias are just kind of marrying in the Rudbeckia and the Baptisia and the Aliens. Like it just looks so pretty, right? And I know I keep saying everything's so pretty, but it is. And I'm just, I love it. I come out here and I'm just in awe of what nature can do. To kind of finish off the other entrance to my home, I tucked in a few pumpkins, added a few mums. I had two of the same wreaths, so I put them on the front door and love how it looks. So as we head down to the front pond, zinnias are still going strong. My um, hydrangea paniculata, the blooms are really heavy, so it's really weighing the branches down. That explains why when we moved here last year, it looked like it was pruned wrong, but really the weight of the blooms were just knocking it over. So still beautiful though. I mean, look at these flowers. It's actually one of the few hydrangeas that made it through the summer here because 
was so hot, so dry, and uh, I have some Incredibles that just didn't do well. Uh, they look good for a while, but then not so much. Cleaning out my vegetable beds, still have some herbs going. And to decorate for fall, I added some sugar pumpkins on all of the fencing. So far, so good. They're looking pretty good. I've got a mum there on the table. And I did plant a few pumpkins around only because I didn't know where to grow them here. We, I, yeah, I just really tucked them in. And look, I've got a really big one down there. It's starting to change color, but uh, it's not quite ready to be picked. You can see that. And uh, we just netted the ponds this week because the leaves are really starting to come down and it helps keep the um, leaves out of the filter. And uh, it's been hard to keep track of the fish, but they are all still here. We have 10 shabunkins in here now. I don't know if we can see any just because of all of the leaves. Oh, there they are. You see them swimming around? But uh, it's really, really pretty. I'm gonna be dividing some hostas and putting them in around this garden. I have so many different varieties here. I couldn't tell you what they are because I didn't plant them, but I think it would fill in really nice and I'd be doing a lot less weeding around this garden. So we have had a blue heron visiting us lately. A uh, good thing we have Bob here because he's been protecting the pond but uh, we have this little wind spinner just to help <laughs> when it's windy with motion to help keep them away. Hasn't bothered the fish, fingers crossed. Um, the former homeowner here had a problem with a mink years ago. A mink got to their fish in this pond. So we were talking to one of our pond experts in the area and he suggested using a black dye. So I think we're gonna be doing that in winter when we winterize the pond. I just love how the front of the house looks. I mean, from the little pumpkins on the fence to all the fall flowers and the changing foliage, it just looks so pretty. I, I, I don't remember it this time last year because it's all such a blur. We were in the process of buying this home and uh, I really didn't get an opportunity to see what was planted here or um, you know I knew the gardens were really something I just didn't realize how much. Now even though we're really heading into fall it's like mid-October now you know the zinnias some of them are still producing and looking pretty good I've still been cutting them and making bouquets it's really been fun and I'm loving the combination of my hydrangea paniculata with Benary's Giant Fine Wine. And while zinnias are a little bit more of a summer flower, mine are still going this fall, it's mid-October, and look at how great they look. Not all of them are doing this good, but so far so good, I'm still cutting and enjoying them. So we've been working on some lawn repair down here. Uh, there are a lot of grubs in the lawn, we had a lot of Japanese beetles, and uh, the summer with that extreme heat and drought just really did a number on the lawn. We put down some milky spore, I overseeded the lawn with tall fescue, and hopefully that will cut down on my Japanese beetle population next year. But look at how pretty everything looks. I've got more pumpkins here. I've got a lot of flowers, but no pumpkins on this one. Uh, I do have pumpkins in other places that have I pumpkin vines in other places that have pumpkins, but for whatever reason, this one is not really producing. Um, I do have some celosia here. They're a little bit of a surprise. I think they were planted by the former homeowner uh, up in the garden above last year, and some of the seed must have reseeded down below. There used to be, I think, a viburnum there. It was completely dead when we moved in, so we just took it out. We've got some hydrangeas here that didn't really do much this year. They do have a black stem. Also looks like it's had enough this fall, but I, bel I believe this is like a black stem variety. Stem was much darker earlier in the season, so I'm kind of curious to see what it looks like when it blooms. I did tuck in some garden moms. 
I'm not usually a big fan of doing that, but I did want to spruce things up here for fall, so I tucked a few in. I don't really like spending a lot of money on them though, because to me, you just don't get the bang for your buck out of them. They're great for a couple weeks and then they don't really look so good. I'd rather buy like asters or, you know, Sedum Autumn Joy or, you know, other kinds. There's a lot of other kinds of plants that do a much better job uh, adding color to the fall garden. My Mexican sunflowers are still doing pretty good, believe it or not. They have fallen over. <laughs> they have fallen over. Uh, they are, but I mean, they still look good, right? So I have still been cutting some of those. My Senora zinnias up there have seen better days. They should probably really just get pulled at this point, but I don't even mind the foliage. When I show you the garden from above, it still kind of looks pretty nice. Uh, this is, I think it's something salmon. I, I'll, I'll put the name in the description, but look at those zinnias. Aren't they so pretty? Got some knockout roses in here. Originally, I thought I can plant like a row of them along the stone wall, but I didn't realize that these hydrangeas would get so big. Uh, they were really small and like short sticks <laughs> when we moved here. So I didn't, I did not think they were this big. Um, so, so, and originally I was gonna move them, but because they've gotten this big, I'm actually gonna move the roses cause they're smaller and I'm just gonna kind of group them in between and so that way I have some some color with my knockouts in between some of these shrubs. But look at the color on that viburnum. Look at that changing color. Isn't that gorgeous? That red. Oh it's beautiful. And then with the nine bark. And look some of some of them have produced berries already. Birds love these. I remember last year they were just going to town on all of them. Wrap up the driveway garden over here. I tucked a few pumpkins in there and I do have a few pumpkins growing by the way. I think there's one growing. We'll have to walk down there but I think it's under that hardy hibiscus. I did tuck a few um, mums in here. My Zinderella peach finally did something. Didn't do much almost all summer long but now friend of mine gave me this cottage on Bunker Hill. I'll tag her in the description so you can look her up. But she sent me her seeds from a prior year and so I planted them and they did really well. Uh, summer was really just brutal on a lot of the plants here. Some not so much like the, the hydra, I mean the uh, hardy hibiscus really thrived. The only problem that they had were Japanese beetles. They were pretty merciless. Um, and then what else do we have here? I planted some pansies. I love pansies in the fall because in here, in my zone 6A, they will bounce back in spring. So totally worth planting them in the fall because you get two seasons out of them. Not really a fan of buying them so much in spring. Although in my spring video where I planted uh, containers here, I did buy a lot of pansies just because we were new here and I wanted to stock up my planters. But in general, I prefer to buy my plant, my pansies in fall because it's just a better investment. Look, look at all that color, even just in the hardy hibiscus. So pretty, right? I've got some moonbeam coreopsis in here, some nepeta, tucked in some kale. And it's such a pretty border. We had sunflowers all in here. I don't know if you remember. We just took them out and cleaned up the beds. I actually made a beautiful front wreath for my door using some cut flowers and my sunflowers. And then I, oof, I can't remember the name of this one. I will put it in the description. It's another zinnia. It did really well, really beautiful cut flower look at the detail on it those petals though right check the description or actually I'll pop it on the screen so you know what kind of zinnia this is it's really beautiful and then to complete the fall look here I got two really big pumpkins hear the train I got two really big pumpkins to put on the stone pillars and then added some sugar pumpkins along the wall and why don't we head out to the side yard where the formal garden is. 
I love coming out here later in the day. I usually walk the dogs out here. Uh, it just looks so pretty with the sun setting and uh, I love the way the formal garden looks. I haven't really done that much here yet. Uh, I do eventually want to plant more flowers here, but you know, we only have so much time in a day and I've really been working more on the front yard than this garden, but it will get my attention <laughs> at some point. It's just not yet, but look at how beautiful it looks with all of the foliage changing. Still have the tree sculptures. And we've got some Russian sage in here, some Chinese silver grass, and then we've got some boxwoods. If you remember from my spring tour, there were a row of daffodils. They looked really pretty. And sometimes we just come out here and sit and hang out. I've ever showed you guys what it looks like from the back of the formal garden but just to kind of give you an idea we own the property out to the trees we did lose one tree over the summer due to that drought we don't have water like a water system irrigation system going out here and without the rain it just didn't survive but uh it's so pretty right I love coming out here and just taking walks with the dogs. We like to check on things every day. Oftentimes we'll find deer out here. And today is like a beautiful day to take a walk. To my surprise, when we moved here, we have two magnolia trees. I was very excited about that because I love using magnolia in arrangements, particularly my winter containers, and they're doing really well. And I'm, I, fingers crossed, they continue to do well, because I love them. So right now, nothing's planted here. Uh, I just haven't done it yet, but I do plan to do some boxwoods and maybe some roses. We also have some leftover liriope, so I might actually go around the very edge with that. I do want to keep a very formal look, so I'm not going to be going crazy, but I do want to get something planted here because to me, it just looks so bare. So there've been a few changes back here in the Zen garden, sadly. Um, I did lose the weeping Eastern larch from the heat and the drought. Apparently they're zoned to my zone, but I think it was so hot and so dry for so long. And even though I watered it, I think it cooked under these rocks. And when we cut the tree down, cause it was completely dead, it was actually tied to like a rebar and it was choking. It had, the wire was like cutting into the trunk. And so the tree wasn't gonna make it anyway, but um, yeah, so the one that was there, it's a goner. I was very sad. So in the Zen garden, I also added some fall just by tucking in a couple of sugar pumpkins. And I actually didn't change too much here. It's really lush with all the greens. I do still have my uh, bubblegum pink super wave petunias, but they haven't bloomed in a while. I did fertilize them, but they haven't bloomed. This was getting full sun for so long. But again, I think the summer was just so brutal back here. Plants are just now starting to rebound. Even my elephant ears over there are just starting to like come back. They did not love <laughs> the summer. I'm gonna have to rethink what gets planted here, but everything looks good now. I've got some sweet potato vine and some licorice plant and some other little goodies. I uh, tucked in some moms. And I, now that, you know, we're into fall, this gets a lot more shade. So I think the plants are a little happier. I'm able to tuck my house plant in here right now so we don't have to look at the big gaping hole. We also netted the pond back here. The frogs that live here are not thrilled with it because they can't figure out how to get in. So they're like crawling around on the netting. Hopefully they'll figure out that they can get in a few spots. But uh, you know, the summer was really rough 
uh, on the lawn back here. I mean, you can see as we walk up the steps, and I do have an irrigation system, but this whole half the lawn was just dry and it just didn't love it. No grubs, we did check the lawn, uh, we, and I, we did just overseed it, we aerated it, overseeded it, and it's just starting to get grass back now. So, uh, did some more plantings over here with some mums and some kale. This baby's breath spiraea will turn a brilliant orange. I cannot even wait. I have some beautiful Incredibles over here. They did not love the summer at all. So we're gonna have to see what happens with these in spring. But um, everything else seems to be doing okay. The color back here really looks incredible from all the Japanese maples and birch. We've got a trumpet vine there that's really, really aggressive. It's popping it's popping up all over the place. We keep trying to cut it back. It's really, really aggressive. It's really should never have been planted here. Um, the benches are doing well. We do really need to seal these because they're really getting dry. And, you know, we didn't get a chance to do it when we first moved in. We're just trying to get a handle on things. It is on the list. It does need to be done because obviously we don't want the benches to decay. I did plant some more mums back here. I'm really loving this pinkish purple color. I love it with the green fence. I just think that looks so pretty. And look, you can see the drought stress on my rhododendrons. Look at how yellow they are. It's sad, right? But then look at that bottle brush buckeye. Isn't the color on that so pretty? If you remember in summer, it was covered in blooms and had a bunch of butterflies. It's an amazing plant. Love it. Um, Obviously, if you want to plant it, I would check with your local cooperative extension to make sure it's not on the naughty list, but here it is okay. Again, incredible, has seen better days. Let's hope she, bounce back. she bounces back next year. And then we're swinging back around to the Zen Garden and more fall plantings. And that's where we love to hang out. My dogs are probably at the back door wanting to come out here with me. Usually they're out here, but sometimes when I'm out in the um, formal garden, they kind of go in all different directions and it's a lot easier for me to take you guys around if I have them inside. So we'll have to grab them when we go back to the front. And one of the things that I forgot to mention is the koi tree sculpture. This is actually my favorite tree sculpture on the property. The details on it are amazing. I cannot believe somebody carved this from a tree and we love it. So if you remember, this bed used to be a uh, completely filled with liriope. We removed it all in spring and I divided a few plants, but I mostly purchased some plants to put in here. There were some roses, there were some peonies, um, but, the, I, but I did tuck in a lot of my seed starts. I had some uh, snapdragons and larkspur. The larkspur didn't do very well because bunny mowed them all down, but um, the, the snapdragons all did fairly well, although I really, really <laughs> am never gonna use these uh, supports again, they're terrible. I, I love the ones, let's see if I have another one, really bad, they just all fall over. I love the ones with the grids, they just hold the plants so much better, but I digress. <laughs> so anyway, I'll definitely be doing more snapdragons in here, but I'm gonna be digging and dividing some of the Rebecca that I have in the small cottage garden by the porch. And I know there's other plants here that I want to dig and divide. I want to add some limelight hydrangeas to this garden. And along the back there where it gets a little shady and I left it open, I'm definitely going to be adding some divisions of uh, some shade-loving plants that we have from hellebores to uh, 
pastas and astilbes and things like that. So that that this whole garden will look different next year. It's a little sparse right now for me, but uh, it is coming along. Some of the plants that are doing well right now are, is this Cleome? That's so pretty. It's been blooming for a while. It's still doing great. And uh, the milkweed's starting to change color, drop its leaves. I had along here some lantana and uh, super wave petunias, but the super wave petunias are pretty much done here. They're not loving the cold and it's the end of the season for them. But I did pop in some mums for a little bit of color. I did grab pink, believe it or not. <laughs> Most of them are that fuchsia purple color, uh, but here's a pink. And then most of them are this pretty purple, which I really love. And one of the things that I learned about this garden that I want to do is I'm really loving the pinks. I love the pinks with that green fence. It just looks so pretty. See the pink roses? I love that combination. So I will be planting a lot more pinks in this garden. I am still gonna have a lot of other colors too because I am gonna move some Rebecca and, and uh, I did like the Helianthus Sun Believable in here, but I just, I don't know. I'm really gravitating to the pinks. I, I love it. And the purples and it's just a really nice color palette with the fence. I'm loving the uh, the leaf color on the balloon flowers, and even though my snapdragons look like a hot mess over there, they look pretty good with <laughs> all kind of messy and hanging out with uh, the helianthus unbelievable and the uh, mum. So even though I have pockets of goodness here, you know some things look good, some things don't. Uh, I'm getting a lot of ideas of how I want this bed to look overall. And that's it, you guys. Thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you hanging out with me in the garden. I'll see you in the next video. Enjoy a beautiful day.